You're listening to the Law Frog Radio Show with David McDivitt and Ross Ford on Kilo 94.3 FM, presented by McDivitt Law Firm. Um, feels like I've known you my whole life. Do you need me to go ahead and do the traffic right now? I can do if it. you want, go ahead. I can put my radio voice on. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll Turn do it. on I-25, heading northbound, southbound. Watch out for a collision there at Cimarron Street. That's actually not true. I just made that up. Yeah. And then you're going to say, uh, brought to you by Hemorrhoid Cream and back to you. Brought to you by Hemorrhoid Cream. And back to you, Ross. You're hey. a user. You tell us. Hey, dude. You, you threw me under the bus. That's perfect. That was Sorry, a perfect job. We do radio, right, Ross? We, from the keto banter where we constantly make fun of each other's shortcomings. Yeah, it is. That's exactly it, Dave. Dude, three segments and you already know exactly how the shtick works. That's Good for you. Great. Uh, obviously, sound effects. He's a lawyer, so it's super sharp. He, he knows how to pick <laughs> things up a bit. Hey, sharp elbows. Um, before we pick up the conversation in regards to people needing help, which we've been up to and everything, we got uh, a guy with some love on the phone. As last time we spoke, I believe this guy got a hold of us. He was wanted to get married. To his love, especially in these in these crazy times, a lot of people yeah. you know put stuff off, and they realize how important it is now. You know, so that was kind of where he's at. But he was scared about losing benefits, benefits, yeah. social security benefits. Yeah, yeah. And, and so we sent him to you because it wasn't exactly you know thrilling on the air. But he tracked you down. And Grego, you want to getting married? Is that right, buddy? Hell yeah, we ended on the Cinco de Mayo. That's good. Congratulations, man. That's great. That way, every year there's a taco party. Wait, hey, get married in two thousand weird. You'll remember that forever, huh? Yay. <laughs> but thanks again for the, the free advice. You guys are killing it with the show, so. Thanks, buddy. We listen to you guys all the time when we're sitting in the jacuzzi drinking wine, getting fat. <laughs> I wish I were you, buddy. <laughs> Why did you marry me? Uh, uh, what the hell's that mean? Uh, can, can, can you get us married? Can I do that? Yeah, can you. Uh, just the two of us? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Maybe we'll do that. And we'll just live at Greg and his new wife's compound. Yeah, we'll all be drinking wine. It's not that far off. There's a guy who married a cat today, and then he's trying to do it. He's saying he's, do it, he's doing it to raise money for the shelter he adopted the cat from. Uh, oh, like, I see. That's a little, right? It's a stretch. It's just the guy who wanted to marry a cat. Mm. Uh, that's what it sounds like to me. I, it, you know, like, it takes all kinds. Um, but we're, weren't we talking about drinking a lot of wine at some point? <laughs> just, I, some, I'm sorry. I seem to remember that. <laughs> after the show, after 10. That's right, because right. okay. it's like noon East Coast time. It's fine. Oh, it's school's, it. school's out for for my children, and so I'm facing this very long summer of trying to figure out how to keep them entertained. Uh, how you to can, work from home. You can stuff. email us uh, questions anytime through the website. We have a Law Frog page dedicated to you, just a name. And if you want to, to talk on there, you can give us your phone number, or if you want to shoot us an email, do that as well. We got Citizen Sam checked in, and I think it's an easy one. I'm not a lawyer, David, but I think I know this one. If a landlord comes after us for non-payment of rent, even after cashing rent checks from us, what legal options do we have? Well, I, I'm going to assume a couple of things here. One of them, Sam, is that the rent checks that he's been he, that your landlord's been cashing have been for the ones that he's claiming non-payment for, because that makes you a really strong case. I mean, if if you've been there for a year and he the first three months, and then you stop paying. Well, then that's a totally different story. But I think what you're saying, Sam, if you're listening, is that you have been paying on, t- let's assume you've been paying on time, assume that the landlord has been cashing those checks, you've got proof that they've been cashing them, then the only claim the landlord would have is that he or she is not the one who's actually been cashing them. Well, that's his problem. That's, yeah, that's right. And so, I mean, you know, sit tight. You you have a, the right to quiet enjoyment of, of your premises. I mean, it means the landlord can't just come in unannounced. Um, you know, looks at, look at the lease and see what it says for that, but you're compliant. It sounds like with, with the rent. So you have every right to continue to be there. And then at that point, what you need to do is send, I'd send a certified letter outlining all of the things that you've done to remain compliant with the, the lease terms, including all the rent checks that you paid, like the check number when it, when it cleared, um, and show you know, if you've got copies of the, the, the cash checks, I mean, a lot of banks will provide you a a copy of what the front and the back look like. You can see the endorsement, the person who cashed that check. Right. Anymore, it's easy, too. Right? Yeah. And it's instant, almost. It's all. It's on. It's online. Yeah, you can't really... If, if you were actually paying your rent and that guy's cashing your checks, there's... You have... He has zero chances of doing anything against you, right? Zero. Yeah. yeah. But, ready? I mean, I think... But, but you know, you take some steps to just firm up your case. Uh, and then and throw that back on the landlord and say, look, this is what we've done. This is what you've done. It's all documented. Send it certified. That's probably going to shut the landlord up. Good. Um, and then if not, I mean, you can you can hire a lawyer to go after him and then get him to 
you know, I think in a situation like that, it, I mean, he's got no, it doesn't sound like your, your landlord doesn't. Well, he's case. got no legal leg to stand on, sir. You are against this court, sir. I'd be a pretty good lawyer, huh, Dave? You'd be, you'd be a good judge, Ross. Maybe so. Ah, yeah. you sicken me so much, sir. I'm going to sentence you to life. Something like that? Yeah, just like that. That's how it's done. And we got something new. Ready? So, Sam, your problem? You've been frogged. <laughs> the divot. <laughs> Do it again. McDivitt, you've been law frogged. Um, Dave McDivitt is our guest, the law frog. The phones, we got a couple of uh, people calling in. Email if you want. We're going to pick up the conversation. Free legal advice, we got you covered. As we rock here on the Kilo Morning Show. Hold tight. 94.3 Keto uh, Law Frog segment here, third Wednesday of every month. Free legal advice from the McDivitt Law Firm. Dave McDivitt joining us. Uh, you're never going to hire me to run your phones at the law offices, are you there, Dave? I'm going to get Ruby receptionist before I get you. <laughs> I've been hanging up on everyone. I'm very, very sorry. It's just awkward. We have to bounce through so many phone lines. Our traffic comes to the phone lines. It's like old school. We need one of those ladies that patches people through. That's right. The little little cord that plugs into a <laughs> hole there. All right, so I'll tell you what. We got uh, a couple folks on hold. I don't know their problems yet. We're going to find that out here in a second and then return with advice and help these folks through. If you got something itching to be fixed, we got you. You're listening to the Law Frog Radio Show with David McDivitt and Ross Ford on Kilo 94.3 FM, presented by McDivitt Law Firm. McDivitt Law Firm, if you need some free legal advice, they can do that. If you want to do this on the air, we understand. Uh, Some stuff very personal. We'll get you that number here in a few minutes. Website as well. You can fire your questions through our website, keto943.com. You can join us on the rock lines at 633 Kilo. And this kind of spins into a question we were somewhere we're going to discuss here in a few minutes. As uh, people, uh, one question was, how injured should I be in order to go to a hospital after a car wreck? Because people don't want to go to a hospital because they don't want to be around people who are sick with whatever still floating out there. So we're going to conquer that because I assume, you know, time is of the essence when it comes to car accidents and, and litigation there. Uh, we turn to Jordan, who's been sitting on this thing for a couple of years. David, we talked to him off the air. This is kind of a weird one, huh? Yeah, Jordan. I it, so I'll let you take the lead on that, Ross. Uh, yeah, I'll you. kind of lay out here. So, so Jordan, a couple of years ago, you were serving papers, uh, kind of like a you're like the, the bounty hunter, almost like that, right? You're just serving papers. You went out to a remote location, went to serve papers. There's no one knocked on the door. No one was there. You left. Your buddy, who you're with, dropped his wallet. So the homeowner showed up, saw a wallet, realized probably what happened. And they made up a story about you kicked in the door and you guys were, you know, breaking and entering. And it wound up, you went to jail for how long, Jordan? Seven days. Seven days. And some of those days you were, because of a medical condition, they put you in solitaire. So how many days in solitaire? Uh, there was four days in solitary confinement because I was not able to be checked out by a, mel- by a medical professional to see if I was able to join general population is what they said. Uh-huh. And then a few days uh, in Raider population. And by the way, I've always wanted to know this. This is a sidebar just for me alone. Is solitaire better than regular jail? It's questionable, at least in solitary. You know you're safe. Yeah, that's I always thought about that. As like, if I get, if, Dave, if I ever get incarcerated and you don't get me off the charges because you're my you're my lawyer now, um, then I would punch someone in the face and go right to solitaire. Yeah, that's like the Steve McQueen. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, all right. So so there's the deal. So he was incarcerated for a while, and they wound up dropping charges. You know, he never got to talk to a lawyer, did you, Jordan? Uh, the only thing they really talked to me about was don't talk. It was just pretty much not giving me any advice as far as what I should do, um, or the, any of the evidence that's been presented, anything wow. like that. It was all just, just be quiet and we'll get around to you. And right. I gotta go. Scare. It's like everyone's biggest, one of the people's biggest fear, incarceration for no reason. Yeah. It, like a Harrison Ford movie. So. Where are we at there, Dave? Again, this was two years ago. So what does he do? Is there anything left? What should yeah, he have done? Little, so the two-year thing is, you know, that jumps off the page at me. Oftentimes there is a two-year statute of limitation for making claims, you know, for uh, what you kind of call it false imprisonment lawsuits. Um, but there's a federal law, they call it 1983, um, that has a two-year statute of limitations that in, in some circumstances might apply if you've been basically, you know, False imprisonment, unreasonable search and seizure kind of stuff. If it was not a reasonable arrest, you know the situation here. I mean, it just seems like it's going to be a little bit of you know, the the police have to use the, their judgment on what seems reasonable given the the evidence that they have when they make an arrest. And you know another claim that 
that Jordan you might have would be against the guy who just fabricated this whole thing. And that would be a civil claim uh, you would have against him. Very and, easy. Have you ever talked to that guy since then, Jordan? Have you had any contact with him at all? Um, so that I won't go to jail for real, no. Okay. <laughs> He's Dude, Jordan would be a good lawyer, huh, David? I like that. I like that. Yeah, so since, you know, obviously you've had no contact with this Whatsoever. Guy, um... <laughs> You know, I, I, again, there's uh. typically two years is the general statute of limitations in Colorado for, for a lawsuit. That, you know, it's extended for the practice that we do. The bulk of our work is in with, with car crashes, and it's three years for car crashes in Colorado. But generally, it's a two-year statute for something like this. Um, so you could, you could definitely look at it. Be, I will tell you this as a practice pointer. This is true for anybody. The closer that you get to the end of the statute for your claim, the harder it is for you to find a lawyer. Um, to help you. Just and time issues? What would you say? Just time issues, probably? Time issues. It's yeah. really difficult. I mean, if you're a lawyer, you've got somebody coming in with a potential case, and you look and you realize, my gosh, I have a one week before the statute of limitations runs yeah. on this case. I've got to, that means I've got to file a lawsuit this week, right now. And I don't have all of the, I don't have all the evidence. I don't have all the facts, all the things that I need to do to build up a, a good case to understand if it's worth even filing a lawsuit. And so it's, it becomes a knee-jerk lawsuit mm. that, that may not have merit ultimately. Um, and so, and lawyers look at whether they think they can do it with a straight face because there are a lot, there are rules in Colorado that say, you know, you can't just file a lawsuit just for the hell of it. I mean, you gotta, there's gotta be a, a reasonable basis for it. Just like there needs to be a reasonable basis for an arrest. Um, and so, you know, Jordan, you, you know, you, you might have a little bit of luck with this. If you're already past the two years, there may be, you know, and again, there are other, um, statutes that are one year as well. Um, Where can you find something like that? Is there, is there, is there a place you can find statute of limitations on various stuff? Say that again? Is there a place you can go to find, uh, statute of limitations on, on various? Uh, yeah, <laughs> a couple of different resources. One, you can go straight to the source. It, it is free online. You can go to the Colorado statute that, uh, kind of explains what the various statutes of limitations are for various um, uh, claims. Okay. Um, but the other thing you can do, too, is it, believe it or not, I mean, a lot of law firms will put that information up on their website. Um, you know, sometimes firms are reluctant to do that because, you know, statutes change from time to time. Every year the legislature changes laws. And some of them uh, involve statutes of limitations, but usually those don't get changed that often. Um, and, and there are so many different factors at, at play here, and not just Jordan in your right. case, but in, in all cases. When you look, when, as a lawyer, when you evaluate a case on behalf of a potential client or even a client you've already that's re retained you, one of the things that you're looking at is, okay, who, if I'm if the kind of lawyer who has to make a claim, if I need to sue somebody, who do I sue and what are the statutes that dictate when I need to sue them? And for any particular occurrence, there might be two or three or even more uh, entities that are involved in, and each one of those or each one of those factors might dictate a different mm. uh, set of rules that right. has a different statute. And that's, what, that's exactly why you need a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> right there, I think that pretty much explains it. Jordan, what would you, like, ideally, what would you like to see happen here? I mean, ideally, I would. I don't really know because the charges against me were so heinous and I don't ever want to see them come back on yeah. me because uh, it was like menacing with intent to kill, breaking and entering, conspiracy. Like it was Jeez. a lot of crazy charges. Gosh. Absolutely so it's almost happen. like you'd r rather have sleeping dogs lie. But, I could, uh, but ideally, would you like to prosecute the guy or are you looking to, to get revenge about the police for locking you up without really any uh, evidence or what? Kind of both. both? I, I mean, if I ideally like some sort of restitution. I feel like mm. that guy should be held accountable for filing false claims. Right, he's not sweating. It. He's not having to call a radio station to see if he can uh, change his life back to normal. <laughs> what, so <laughs> is there anything there, though, David, on either of those fronts, do you think? Is anything what, worth what chasing? Done in the last couple of years, I mean, have you looked at this at all? Not really. I know that there, my, the, my, my friend, who was the other process server, he, I think his family did pursue charges. But I haven't been in contact with them for over a year now. Cool. You should tra track him down first and foremost, and then and moving on. Yeah. Then Dave, if someone finds themselves in this horrible position, what do they do at the very source? I would start by talking to a lawyer. I mean, you can go on with the website, try to find a lawyer that specializes typically in civil rights violations, because that's really what you're looking at here. Um, 
And that, that, I think, is a good starting point because they, they can evaluate whether or not you've got a really strong claim against law enforcement, you know, the judicial system, or whether your claim is strongest against the guy who manufactured this. Um, and I mean, I think you do. And then you have to look at what your damages are, too. I mean, obviously, a reputational hit, but, you know, you spent seven days in, in jail, four of them in solitary. You know, there's a lot of emotional distress that goes along with that. Maybe you missed work. I mean, there, there are some real tangible damage that can come out of them. You're listening to the Law Frog Radio Show with David McDivitt and Ross Ford on Kilo 94.3 FM. Presented by McDivitt Law Firm. 94.3 Kilo right now is fire from the gods. And ha, how you doing? It's a Kilo Morning Show. We got uh, free legal advice. If one Wednesday, we could almost do this every single Wednesday, Dave. There's a lot of people with problems out there, huh? Yeah. Well, you look, we, Ross, we should do this every day, just the two of us talking for an hour. Well, like you it, just, it feels good just to help people. Like hearing from uh, Grego, the guy you helped a few weeks ago is good. We talked oh, to a guy great. named Jax who was basically almost killed by a oh, uh, truck on his motorcycle, which we, you know, we've talked about that this week several times. There's been, in the last seven days, there's been two motorcyclists lost their lives for people not paying attention and pulling out in front of them, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and Jax is an unfortunate recipient of... Yeah, quite a horrific accident. But it's in it's in South Carolina. It was a while ago. There's an urgency to get these things reported fast, right? Absolutely. And here's the thing, and, I, and I'll just say this, too. For people, the weather's changing. Now is when we see, you know, a lot of our clients are motorcycle riders. And so we get a lot of motorcycle cases from people this time of year because they're out and they're doing everything they should be doing. And we just get a lot of other motorists driving larger vehicles who aren't paying attention. So please, if you're out there and you're driving – Pay attention. Keep your eyes on the road. Watch out for motorcyclists. Sh- share the road. If you're a motorcyclist, if you're injured, you have rights. Uh, and, and call us, and we'll see if we can walk you through what we can do to help you with your claim. But let's all just try to keep each other safe. I have, you know, I just hear it anecdotally from people all over the state too. But as things start to open up a little bit, people are on the roads more. We're seeing bigger, bigger collisions. Right. Um, and there's a there's a sense of rage or, 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 or tension on the roads right now. And, you know, our roads have never been the safest roads. But even right now, I, they feel particularly unsafe. And so people, please just pay attention. Drive safely. You know, give, give some slack to the other guy. We had a call last week, also had an email and, and with a similar question about uh, how injured do you need to be to go to the hospital in an accident? I know, you know, I'd have to be pretty beat up to want to go to a hospital, personally, I know, right it now. I that way, too. I keep telling my kid, don't get hurt. That's me. I'm, a, I'm so accident prone. Every time I'm jackass around the house with like saws and stuff, it's like, all right, be extra careful, dude. You don't want to go, you don't want to go have to get a, get a stitch this weekend. I and I've been good. But so well, you're in an accident. Obviously you're hurt. Where, where is that threshold? To- call it in, call it in right away. Right call away. The, yeah. Call in your primary care doctor. First of all, I mean, if it's, if it is clear that you need to take an ambulance to the hospital, take yeah. an ambulance to the hospital, they are doing everything that they can to protect they're non-COVID patients, and obviously COVID patients too, but I mean, to be, it's business as usual for so many of these facilities still to the extent that they can. So, I mean, you can still get in. I, I wouldn't be afraid afraid to go to the hospital, um, but I would be, you know, just, just aware of if, do you need to go? And if so, it's probably pretty obvious. <laughs> Otherwise, call in, and there's a lot of telemedicine. A lot of providers and insurance companies are really starting to ramp up their ability to visit with you remotely with uh, video conference. Uh, and if you, you know, most phones these days point. can do that. Yeah, that's a great point. Yep. You don't have to go to the hospital. Or you kind of <laughs> think about, I keep on forgetting what a new, the new norm is. You don't have yep. to go to the hospital anymore. And then let more me, so, uh, this is just for me. You go, let's say some jackass bangs into you, you have to go to the hospital. You catch COVID at the hospital. Is that guy's fault, the guy that hit you? Because you would have been in the hospital without it? Boom. That's a tr- that's Boom. Tricky. The law has some, there's, Crazy. there's some... Um, element to the law that allows huh. for recovery for the things that happen because of, you know, you're in that ramifications. A, I think it'd be a little tricky on the right. Case. That could be the new norm, though, right? You could be actually fighting one of those cases here in the next year or two. I know, but let me this is another message. So I said yeah. one message out to the people to keep the road safe for the motorcycle riders. Another one is if you're hurt, if you if you need to treat, continue to treat. Do it telemedicine because if you do have a claim, if you've been hurt and you are pursuing an insurance claim, not continuing to get treatment can be a, a case killer. Yeah, absolutely can. So continue to find ways. You know, if you whether we're representing you or you have another lawyer, speak with your lawyer. Find out what other opportunities you have. To, to continue to get the treatment you need so that you can get better, because that's the best thing you can do uh, if you've been hurt, is just take, take ownership of your medical care. There you go. We're getting law frogs. 
here with Dave yes. McDivitt. The McDivitt Law Firm. We'll give name, uh, website, and phone number again. Here in a few, real quick, let's go over to line one. This is Maisie, and it's nice. She's ta- she's proactive when it comes to opening a business with her friend. Um, hello, Maisie. Can you hear us? Yes. Cool. What's your question exactly? So I was wondering if there was any good resources for a pre-made partnership agreement. Because yeah, you're starting a business with a friend. What, what kind of business, by the way? Um, Like a skincare business. What is it again? A skincare business. So like you Skincare. Know, skincare. Oh, David is way into skincare. He's got beautiful hair and beautiful skin. Don't <laughs> laugh. I am. I mean, I don't have beautiful skin and beautiful hair, but, I, but I'm into skincare. <laughs> He's working okay. on it. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, people, here's another, here's another PSA. Wear sunscreen. Even if you're inside your house, sun comes through the windows. Wow, look at that. Well, where'd she go? Can you hear me? Yeah, where did she go, oh, Dave? I'm sorry, now you're talking to me. I'm sorry, I'm off on thinking about sunscreen and protecting the skin. <laughs> um, Maisie, I applaud you for doing this, for, you know, A, caring about skin, B, caring about uh, starting a business, and, and, and C, I guess I'm on letter C now, for trying to do it right when you start. <laughs> and I think giving a partnership agreement is the best thing you can do. A couple of things to think about. Make sure that you understand kind of what, uh, business entity that you want to have, whether it's a partnership, whether it is an LLC. Uh, and, and if you haven't already, I would, I would consult with uh, an accountant and, and a lawyer, uh, a business lawyer that focuses on this kind of stuff. You want a pre-made mm-hmm. form, which is great. And there are companies out there. I mean, I, you know, the one that always jumps off the page because they spend so much on marketing those is um, LegalZoom. You know, they do, they do some of that, you know, those pre-made agreements. I think the drawback to going with a pre-made agreement that you find on the internet, while it can be very helpful and, and in a pinch, you know, I would rather do that than have nothing. I mean, having something is so much better than nothing. Um, if you know, want to maybe tie it up with a bit of a bow, um, get a lawyer, make sure that you, you spend maybe one or two hours with them to talk and make sure that you've analyzed the right entity structure for your, for your operation. And, you know, the several hundred dollars that you spend on that may pay dividends down the road, um, whether it's tax time or if there, God forbid, is some kind of hiccup in your relationship with your partner. Yeah, exactly. And I, once me and a buddy were going to uh, bring these, like, uh, uh, crawler kegs uh, to line. They were really cool. And we talked to a lawyer, and it turns out that the, that, that kind of thing was trademarked, and we would have been sued. Yeah. And so that wow. was, it was, like, still, like, 400 bucks. Uh, to yeah. talk to this lawyer for an hour or so, but it saved my ass because if we would have bought a bunch of those things, we had we had product, I would have been a different man. I would have been sad. I've been calling you, Dave, going, ah, I need yeah. help. And the other thing, Maisie, too, too, I mean, if you're talking about, you know, skincare and you're going to be in kind of a retail uh, position here yeah. where per- perhaps you're you're reselling a manufacturer's skincare product, getting somebody to just make sure that they've put an eye on whatever agreement you have with the with the large company. Uh, can be helpful too to make sure that you're protected and that you they can't come back and claim um, that you're not selling correctly or, or a greater share of of your proceeds. Again, not this is not a I'm not trying to drum up business for the business lawyers in town that I know, and I know several very good ones. So if you you know offline, I can give you the names of at least one or two that I think could really help you. But but there are I mean if you want something cheap and, and dirty, cheap, but that's me. Ross, I would never call you cheap. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe dirty, but um, yeah, you can go online and Google some of it. Um, so let's say though, to make this for the, for her best, or cheapest and best, if she gets a contract offline and uh, they sign it, is the best thing to do it in front of a notary. That way, that at least even if the documents maybe not a hundred percent, the fact they inked it in front of some professional that makes it more legitimate. Well, it, I mean, the notary just ensures that you can just say, yeah, I'm the one who signed it, right. and you're the one who signed it. That's probably a safe bet, though, yeah, right? The notary is not looking at the, the, the content. Yeah, it, no, exactly. But then if there's any question later, like, oh, I didn't sign that. I don't know what that is. Yeah, a, but even if you're friends. Email it, the signed version back and forth to each other, too. That's a good point. Yep. Um, yeah, that's right. It's a digital notary anymore. Yeah, huh? Well, yeah, the idea of saying, hey, look, you emailed this. This is what you emailed back. Here's the attachment. I mean, that can help. Um, but yeah, I mean, having it so, notarized never hurts. It might not always be necessary in certain circumstances, but it never hurts. Um, so but yeah, make sure that you've more. outlined and, and try to think through all of the contingencies. And it's so hard when you're starting a business to think about what might go wrong and what needs to be outlined in there. But well, you know, what were you saying, Maisie? What, you got one more question? So if I was to get like this pre-made form and then maybe take it into an attorney to have them look it over... Listen, I, I, I suspect that they would be happy to do that too. And a little bit cheaper. Yeah. 
Yeah. And having them draft something up. Mm, good. Hey, you got a name of the place? I was thinking, how about this? Uh, four skin. <laughs> like four, <laughs> it's, it's, we're here for your skin. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ross, that's exactly what you were thinking. Four I think, skin, you know, we thought about it. We considered it, but we changed our mind. Yeah, <laughs> do you have a name yet? <laughs> Yeah, we're going to go with Give Me Some Sugar. Give Me Some Sugar. Well, next to Four Skin, that's the best, yeah. the second best one. Oh, this is great. What is the show devolving into, Ross? What? Like, you're, I'm Four Skin. I love skin. Skin is good. Four Skin. Let's go skin. You guys are just sick. I love Four hey, Skin. Up. There you go. Hey, Maisie, grow up. <laughs> grow up and get off my radio station. Good God, man. Goodbye. David, you're a lawyer, for God's sakes. Grow up. Since when is this guy the most mature guy on the phone? Come on, gang. Oh, my gosh. I didn't. Someone just told me what that meant. I, I, I didn't see it that way. I'm oh, so you sorry. didn't know. I oh, had no I'm idea, sorry. you pervs. Oh, my God. That's she, gross. Did you the name of somebody or is she on the line? Uh, she's gone. She, that's fine. Give me some sugar. That's a great name. Good luck. I like that name. Good luck. We'll go get, uh, we'll go get a facial. You and I. Yeah. And then maybe we'll go get our skin done, too. And maybe get a mani and a petty. There we go. Yeah! My friend, always a pleasure to hang out with the law frog, Dave McDivitt. If you want to get a hold of Dave and his uh, crack staff, well, he's got a bunch of them, and they uh, are willing and able to accept your calls and you get free consultations. One more time, give us the radio voice 800 number for McDivitt Law Firm. 800-800-8543. Nicely done. You get the applause and everything, buddy. Wait, are we done? We are done. Gosh, it's just so fast. Flies. It does, man. Ross, Ross, don't, no, keep me on the phone, please. Because if I have to get off the phone, that means I go back to child care. Um, <laughs> that's exactly it. It's not the fact that Dave wants to hang out with us. He's no, just I, I mean, so Ross, like you sick that's of fine. being locked down. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Well, hey, always a pleasure, Dave. Good job today. You made a difference in the world. Not yep. a lot of lawyers can say that, you know. Well, we're trying. Every day, we're trying. And you too, Ross. Thank you for listening to the Law Frog Radio Show with David McDivitt and Ross Ford on Kilo 94.3 FM, presented by McDivitt Law Firm.